Hello, I'm the Lich, and welcome to the Liching Hour. Recap of Episode 2 of the Liching Hour Season 1, Campaign 1. The adventure is Sailors on a Starless Sea with Dungeon Crawl Classics. That's a lot of words for me to say, people. But anyway, before we get into um, how well our party of 12 peasants did storming an ancient keep, first, in Dungeon News. As some of you may have noticed around the dungeon, there are little green goblins popping up everywhere. And in weird places, too, like not on level 2. Try not to touch them, and under no circumstances should you lick or eat them. We're still trying to figure out what their what the whole deal is. Uh, we should have it figured out pretty soon. In other news, uh, a group of adventurers broke into level 1 last night, but they didn't make it past the newly installed IKEA pit traps. Good job, Barglo the ghoul, for in setting those traps and for taking the trolls on level 6 up on their pit trap seminar. You're a braver man than I am. Uh, and finally, remember to keep your stuff out of the halls tonight. The green slimes will be coming through, keeping our dungeon nice and clean. All right, thank you. That's the news. So let's recap. We had a pretty exciting night for this adventure. We didn't get very... F the adventures didn't get very far, but it was... Uh, it was a little bit epic, and it was an epic battle. So where we started off, if you remember from last episode, uh, the group had just lost yet another person. They started out being 12, uh, 12 people, three, uh, four from three different villages, and then at the end of the episode, there was only nine left. We had lost a two of them from Partridge Quarry, there were two, and the, the group from Partridge Quarry were all close friends, so the people who were left were quite hit by that. Tom, the gambler, had fallen into this giant well of darkness in the courtyard, and that's where we found our heroes. It was in the courtyard, um, stunned and reeling and just kind of um, uh, distraught over having just lost a third person into this well. Snope, the leader of the Partridge Quarry, he um, not only just lost his friend and um, the other friend, Birdie, the um, gravedigger, they'd lost her to a crazy fine har. He wasn't looking so good. He, uh, he was very, very um, not okay. Uh, so that's where we found him. But a little bit of luck, one of them, Cassius, the, uh, the smartest of the group, a uh, woodcutter, he had taken that moment to kind of uh, scout the courtyard and he found what uh, what looked like an ancient tomb or a door to an ancient tomb uh, half buried in the earth they couldn't all get it open so they used the pulley system he was clever and used the pulley system from the well to um, pry it open it just turned out to be a little cachet of stuff got them a nice long sword a bow which um, Megal from Partridge Quarry took uh, and then um, but also some healing powder, which the uh, Padre from Damp Moss, the uh, apothecarist, he was able to use on Snope and get Snope back up to uh, uh, back up to full health. So that was a little bit of luck that kind of swelled the uh, morale a little bit. Um, some of them had been, especially the Catholic ones, were thinking about just splitting, but that kind of swelled the party and got them going. And they continued on. They they went to the most obvious place, which was. Uh, the last tower standing of the keep uh, followed the trail there and they had to cut through this big door to get in and what they found when they got in was this rotting field of uh, I say field but it was the floor was covered in furs disgusting gore crusted furs like pieces of beast and humans it was just absolutely disgusting I don't know who would keep a dungeon so disgusting not my dungeon okay but uh and they were accosted by these six. When they went in, they found these six nasty beast men waiting for them, and and moans and and cries from people. And they can't see the people, but they saw the beast men. And the beast men were just they looked like hairy beasts, except they couldn't tell what kind of beasts they were because their maws were kind of just all open, and they were dripping and weeping um, maggots and and f flies all around them. And there were six of them that kind of started trying to surround them. And when the battle started, it started off strong. Um, uh, 
with uh, one of our, a couple of our heroes stepping up and one just felling uh, one of the beastmen right out the gate, killing him uh, with, a, with a flail. And, but, oh, let me rewind, because this was kind of cool. So the party had come in in kind of pairs, and then the beastmen showed up, and then um, Bundy, if you remember from the last episode, Bundy was our young squire knight who wanted to be a knight, and uh, he had a shiny helmet and a big long sword. He had the nicest long sword and the nicest helmet. Um, he comes rushing in. He does this, and he he rushes in, and he sees these six beastmen, and they're very horrifying. And the only thing he's so scared, he, the best thing he can do, is he tries to scream to scare him. Right? Well, we roll. It doesn't scare him, but it does charge up his buddies. Right? And his buddy runs up roaring, and he just one hit, one hits this one guy, kills him outright. His other friend roars and comes in, and he doesn't necessarily one hit but somebody, but he injures somebody. And then they're roaring, and then this other roar comes from not them, and it just turns everybody's bones to jelly, and they're like freaked out as this huge shape comes crashing down in the middle of the floor, and it's this big, be this big huge man that stands like two foot taller than everybody with a big um, uh, uh, bull head a huge minotaur with this big axe and he swings down and it's pretty sure that this is going to be the end of Bundy because Bundy's standing out there and he swings down and Bundy just he's been training for this his whole life he steps aside as the axe goes down and then um, and then it's on like Donkey Kong it's like uh, the, the battle happens and with a re really weird twist of luck um, Barrow, one of the guys that's the big elven artis artisan from Damp Moss comes rushing in. He jabs his staff. He doesn't do any damage, but he jabs. He crits, naturally crits, and hits the um, this uh, minotaur right in the throat and, and puts him out of the battle for two rounds while he's staggered trying to, um, trying to breathe. And that gives the party enough time to um, fight some of the beastmen and fight the... Um, and then end up killing the minotaur. Sad part is, is that um, the two guys well the sad part is is we lose three of our heroes as brave and awesome as Bundy was he ends up falling to one of the beastmen first a couple beastmen his his buddies um, uh, what were they little John and Kendrick little John's the one that rushed in and just and roared and killed one with one hit. Then he kills another, but then two more gang up on him and end up killing him and then killing Kantrick and then going over and killing um, Bundy. All three of the rest of the guys from Fairy Deep fall, fell in this battle, and um, but no one else did. So we've lost three more. Uh, and when they did f um, kill the Minotaur, the other couple of beastmen that were still alive ran off into a doorway um, in the side of the uh, room that gave the, the team time to um, assess what was going on and what was going on in the room and they just happened they they realized that there were people hanging from the walls in sa large sacks that were still alive they cut them down they found four new people one of which happened to be the little rogue that Talia was looking for who had promised her a treasure map and um, but then had gotten had gotten taken um, but he swears that the beastman had taken his treasure map. So she lets him live if he would stay, um, kind of by bonding him to help them try to find the treasure map. But all four of the people are from Damp Moss, and um, Damp Moss is where Cassius, Padre, Barrio, and Talia are from. They all know these people to a degree. We have the new characters being picks the um, beggar girl that they all know they've all given a few coppers to outside of the inn at one time or another never knew her name but her name is Pix and she's actually quite um, hardy um, then there's Harris Cat the uh, lawful animal trainer who's the asshole of the village then there's uh, Morg the chaotic cut purse is the guy who um, who had the treasure map that um, he owed Talia the elven barrister and then we had Bint the lawful caravan guard. There's nothing special about any of these people other than kind of like the story behind them. Morg, uh, Morg and Pix immediately begin searching the furs, the gore encrusted furs on the floor while everyone else is trying to decide what they want to do. And Pix accidentally find, um, gets attacked by this grub, a rock grub that tries claw crawling in her arm and crawling up her arm. It, it digs into her flesh and it's crawling up her arm. But Morg rushes over and uses his dagger and just one hits, just stabs this thing and pulls it out and kills it. Uh, I'm giving you high points. And then 
the uh, they find this uh, little alcove that um, has um, like a, a sword, a bunch of gold pieces and platinum pieces that gets everybody kind of charged up, and then uh, a green cloak that no one really cares about, but it happens to be Morg, and he's got his treasure map is sewn into the that nobody knows, so he's got his treasure map back. And Battalion does not know, and then that's where we leave the party, trying to decide what they want to do next. The um, the room has a, some stairs that go up into the battlements up above, but then they also there's also a door and they, a doorway that the um, beastmen ran through. And they haven't even checked that yet. We just kind of cut out. Then um, we're gonna get back to them Fridays 1:30 a.m. Eastern uh, to continue on and see how these guys are doing. Why don't you join us because um, chat plays. Uh, I'm gonna be narrating this stuff and doing this, but if you want to join in, tell me what you want, what the character should do, what a monster should do, what might should might maybe should happen at that time. Uh, I'm welcome all input, and I want this to make this a collaborative um, adventure. So, join me Fridays, 1:30 a.m. Eastern Time. Feeble the dungeon.